Just another stock Corvette. See? Church car. Chrome wheels. What's going on, y'all? Thanks for tuning in to another episode here on the Speedbug channel. In the trailer today and doing some maintenance on the vet. And uh, I'll show you guys some of the spark plugs from the track outing last night. You can see five out of the eight are actually torched. Neighbor's damn rooster. Um, only got something to say when I'm recording her on the phone. Uh, but here we are in the uh, garage. Oh, and it's going to be with the trailer with the Corvette. Doing spark plugs again. And uh, this is completely 100% my fault. I actually left the extra timing in when it had race gas and when it was on the dyno. So it definitely torched the plugs going down the track. It made a, a killer pass for the four seconds that's it or five seconds that the pass actually uh lasted but uh it's obviously way too much time in there for pump gas and uh and, and methanol so uh, it definitely torched the plugs and i knew once it kind of laid over you know at the end of the track i lifted and let out and the second time i tried to make a hit it wasn't even happening and going nowhere so uh but it did it did go pretty fast i let out at the uh 660 uh, I still remember, guys. I still do this on my uh, twenty-inch wheels, and uh, it, it made it, it made great time. Um, I'm, I'm not going to disclose exactly what times, but uh, uh, I'm just going to tell you: it, letting off at the six sixty and it crossed a quarter mile, coasting at one hundred and ten, uh, and it was still in the bottom nine. So that'll kind of give you an insight to what this car actually does run on. Um, on 20s and uh that's all i'm gonna say about that so we're gonna go get some race gas and stuff for it a little bit later today and uh put a new set of plugs in it fire it up um and you know um also adjust the tune so i know exactly what i could throw at it and keep it safe still if i ever decide to run it again on 93 but it is going to end up going to full race gas no mixture anymore or anything like that I used to run a leaded mixture but uh, the downside to that, I was just, I don't really feel like replacing my oxygen sensors all the time. And it's kind of a toss up. Some guys, you know, whether it be a narrow band or wide band, uh, you can get, uh, I don't know, sometimes 5,000 miles out of them, you know, two, 300 hours. And uh, some other times, hey, two, three passes and then, and then they're toast. There's really no, uh, you know rule or you know myth to the madness of how long your o2 sensors which i still do run them on this car uh to how long they're going to last with you know uh let it octane let it octane is great I, I personally i love it and uh because you can get real high in the octane numbers you know in the 116 to the hell even the 120 range where unleaded uh like uh ms 109 and uh what's the other one i think it's a 260 gt plus you know they're like 104 105 ish um not a real big fan of the octane boosters to have too much residue and shit that they leave behind uh inside of your uh combustion chamber and on your cylinder heads and on your uh, your valve seats but uh so we'll just you know we'll probably gonna end up running just full uh ms 109 good thing it is oxygenated but uh you know maybe end up doing a little splash of a, a little lead here and there just you know to keep it safe but i'm probably not going to get too greedy again like i did with this time and this is 100 percent my fault i blame nobody but me but uh it's a uh, absolutely great uh, learning experience um i was able to really push my car last night to see exactly how far i could really take it on on 93 without any uh, additive of race gas which i've done a few times in the past so stay tuned for an update on that snow white is still healthy uh for the ones that want to see her she's right there there's the motor which you guys have seen before and uh we're gonna keep going and uh getting the trans all dialed in with the shift points and stuff like i ended up having uh for the ones that wanted to know what the trans and the diff the, uh, they are working they are working fine um i used to manually shift this car even though it is an automatic i used to manually shift it and now i'm really trying to get it dialed in kind of like my zl1 where i can get the trans to shift and do everything perfect uh perfectly uh for the people that know in tune these 8l90s versus the 10l90s the 10l90 responds immediately to how fast and uh, you command it to do something you know commanded shift versus reaction uh, as opposed to the 8-speed, even though they do share a lot of the same parts, uh, but they also are very different. And um, the 8-speed, yeah, don't get me wrong, it shifts fast. I've gotten it to shift at like between 
on the high side, you know, like the fastest ever is like, you know, 0.15 and, uh, you know, but maybe around 0.2, um, you know, about two tenths of a second. And the, the 10 speed is just, it, it's night and day different as opposed to, you know, what the eight speed can do. It's just, it, it, the, the eight speed takes a little bit of time to catch up and think. So, um, so yeah, just, you know, getting that dialed in and you just kind of got to make some passes, even though the, uh, the couple, uh, hits, you know, two, three, four, five that I was able to get down through the racetrack, I was able to get some good data on that and get that, uh, joker sorted out, but we're going to get the rest of this pump gas drained out of the tank, throw the race gas in it. And then in a couple weeks, we'll be back on the dyno and, uh, making sure that my, uh, AFR is right and everything else is Gucci and, uh, swapping out and going full race gas but thanks for tuning in guys we'll see you here for another episode here on the speed bug channel peace